I'll never forget, I had flown into Peru and uh, some people had given me money to buy pastoral libraries and I flew into Peru and got there real late and uh, about got to my sleeping quarters at about two in the morning after going through customs and everything, but something just, I couldn't sleep. I had to go to the bookstore the next day I, and I didn't know why. Why should I go to the bookstore in Lima? But I just knew, I just couldn't even, I've got to go to the bookstore tomorrow. Well, you've got several days, we could do that later. No, I've got to go now. And remember, I, I took a taxi there and got there too early and the doors weren't even open. It's the one good bookstore there in, in, in Peru. And I, I walk in and I, I walk near the store and I see this little man. And I could tell he was from the jungles of San Martin because I had worked there before. And I see him sitting there on the curb, kind of looking around. And I sat down beside him. I said, uh, como estas? You know, what, what's going on? Where are you from? And he started telling me. We started talking about places I'd been, where he'd been. And, and I said, what, what are you doing all the way in Lima? He said, well, it took me three days to get here. Back of trucks, buses. And I said, well, what are you doing here? He goes, I'm pastoring. I've become a pastor. And he goes, my church gathered up some money for me to come buy some books. And when he said that, my heart just broke because I knew the money they gave him wasn't enough to buy a track in that store. So I walked, sat there and I said, oh, that's good. And um, so the door finally opened and we went in and I went in and I just started, I knew what pastoral libraries I needed to buy and things I needed to get for poor pastors. So I'm just keeping it all up in piles and going along. And I think I got two guys helping me there in the store, get all the books together. And I watched that man out of the corner of my eye. And he'd go to one bookshelf and you'd see him look. He'd go to another. And then finally he went to this little place where they sold chick tracks. And I saw him pick out about four. And just to look at his face, you know, and he walks up to the counter. It was like the greatest day of my life. He walks up to the counter. He bought them. He's just kind of standing there, and I walked over to him. I said, hey, how's it going, you know? He said, oh. didn't even say anything. He was just broke. And I said, what books did you get? He goes, I, I, didn't, get any, I didn't get any books. <laughs> And I said, I said, do you know where I'm from? He said, no. I said, I'm from the United States. You know how far away that is? He said, no. I said, about, about 6,000 miles. I said, do you know how much my plane ticket cost? And he was like looking at me like, why are you saying this to me? I said, do you know how much my plane ticket cost? He said, no. I said, about $800. Do you know when I got here? He said, no. I said, two this morning. Do you know I couldn't sleep? And he said, no, I, I, I didn't know you couldn't sleep. <laughs> and I said, do you know why? He said, why? Now you're looking at a man that if he held five dollars in his hand, he wouldn't know what to do. I said, a few months ago, God raised up a group of people in the United States. And they gave me money. And then I bought a plane ticket for $800. And I flew in a plane here. And I landed here last night all the way from the United States. And I couldn't sleep all night. And so I got in a taxi this morning and I made my way down here. Do you know why? He said, no. Because to buy you every book you're ever going to need. I said, do you, real do you realize the love of God? I love that. Because if God loves him that much, he loves me that much, he loves you that much. Just think about that. God moved people from an entirely different nation. God spent all kinds of money, bought a plane ticket for one reason, a little Indian in the middle of the jungle. 
And if you say coincidence, you're a blasphemer and a fool. God did that for him. Isn't that wonderful? We got, we got such a good God. We got a wonderful God. Just got a wonderful God. And, and that's what missions is about. We're always thinking about, it seems like we go to the mission field and we jump completely over the church to do our own thing with the lost. You ever realize that? I see missionaries and mission groups doing this all the time. Jump right over the church to go do something with the lost. My thing is the bride of Christ. If we help the bride become beautiful and strong in those countries, she'll take care of the lost. She'll take care of the lost. We need to pour our lives into the church because that's the only place God's determined to get glory for Himself.